Welcome back. This week's technical is a seasonal one. We are talking about overfat autumn carvers. Now, if you've been watching these videos and you find them remotely useful, don't be afraid to hit subscribe. And once you've watched the video, press like, leave me a comment. Those things all really help and get the video seen by more people and hopefully manage to impart some half useful information to them. For context, some of our guys up here in Northumberland have started autumn carving already. It is just mid-August when I'm making this video. Now, carving for some might mean August, and for others it might mean November. Nonetheless, in this part of the world, autumn carvers tend to be fatter at carving than spring carving cows, and there's a number of reasons for that. But really, the most important one is that with spring carving cows, they're typically housed. Consequently, we have greater control over what we feed them, and hence they're less likely to get into an over-fat and over-conditioned state. And even if they're not housed, i.e. they're outwintered, the forage quality and the conditions of outwintering don't necessarily lend themselves to cows being fat by the time they come to spring calving. Now, what is the issue with autumn calving cows or any calving cows being fat? The main issue is that it affects calving difficulty. So cows that are above the target body condition score, now Typically that is between two and a half and three out of five. <laughs> I'll put a link to some really good body condition scoring resources in the video description. So if they're above that two and a half to three, we see greater issues with calving difficulty. And that's for a number of reasons. The cows tend to have more fat in the pelvis and that obstructs the calf coming out. The calves also tend to be bigger. We don't understand particularly well how nutrition in pregnancy affects calf size. We understand much better how genetics affects that. Some people think it's to do with nutrition in the second third of pregnancy. Others think it's more to do with the final third. Nonetheless, if a cow is very well fed during pregnancy, her calf will tend to be bigger. Up here in a temperate climate like the north of England, spring and summer grass will be what those autumn calving cows are eating during pregnancy. And that is a really good, a really rich ration that they are going to be able to pour into their calf and also their own body fat reserves. Of course, with bad calvings come all the associated issues, prolapses, cesarean sections, impaired fertility, poor survival and the rest. For reference, in our patch, when I last checked, roughly 25% of the cows under our care, if you like, are autumn calving cows. Now, I classed autumn as August to December. Again, there's a little bit poetic license, but really it tells you what you need to know that only about a quarter of our cows could be classed as autumn calving versus spring calving. And that's quite interesting because certainly last autumn, we seemed to go to as many calvings during the autumn as we did during the spring. So I would say on an anecdotal basis, autumn calving cows are overrepresented when it comes to being hard calving. So where to start? And a word of warning, if you are looking at your autumn now and thinking those look quite fat, this is definitely not the time to try and starve condition off of them. That will only make things worse. So remember in this last third, and especially in the final four to six weeks of gestation, those cows or heifers are really preparing for what's the most stressful period of the annual cycle. They're having to make colostrum. All you will end up doing is pulling big calves out of skinny cows with no colostrum. That really is not where you want to be. Instead, you're just gonna to have to watch them like a hawk, continue to feed them well, otherwise you're gonna run into colostrum issues as, as I've said. Instead, now is the time to think, right, how will we manage those cows next year to stop this happening again? And there are a number of ways that you can do that. Of course, as I alluded to earlier, the easiest way to affect calf birth weight and therefore your calving ease is through genetics. So in my opinion, there is a strong argument to say that 
picking an easy carving ball for your autumn carving cows and heifers is even more important than for your spring carving cows and heifers. Going back to nutrition and condition, the most important thing is to benchmark, find out, put some hands on those cows, work out exactly where you are and exactly how, how far off the pace you may or may not be. If you've got these over fat cows this year, there are a number of ways you can avoid that in the next year. A really common and successful one in our herds is delaying weaning. So while calves are still on cows, they're still drinking and therefore the cow is, has higher energy requirements and shouldn't put on quite so much condition. Of course, you do need to take the calves off at some point and typically we say you need at least a three week dry period for suckler cows to ensure adequate colostrum production ensure adequate colostrum production for the next calf. Putting cows onto the poorest pasture over the summer until the final stages of pregnancy, dry suckler cows really do have pretty low energy and protein requirements. They are brilliant machines for turning grazing into beef and fat. You may as well make best use of that ability. They don't need to be on your luscious reseeds or anything like that. You can heavily graze them on this poor quality pasture. The SAC suggests stocking at double the normal rate. Where you're putting cows onto poorer pasture, that can be quite difficult if there are calves at foot which need much better quality grazing. So you can either creep feed the calves or you could wean them early and put the calves onto some higher quality say silage aftermaths or just generally better quality grazing. If you just don't have that rough pasture available or you're not comfortable doing that, you can always house them. And again, it comes back to the fact that we can control the ration far more precisely when cattle are housed. Of course, it has drawbacks. You've got cattle to bed and cattle to feed every day as you would do during the winter housing period. As with all cows, make sure there are adequate minerals available, especially magnesium. I'm not gonna go into any more detail than that because typically minerals, trace elements are very farm specific. And so you should talk to your vet before going and supplementing with any particular mineral or trace element. If you have housed your autumn carvers, depending on the conditions, you can then turn them out very quickly back to grass with all the appropriate mineral and trace element supplementation that they need. So the headlines are, Autumn carvers are more likely to be overconditioned than spring carving cows. The risks of having overconditioned cows include higher carving difficulties, higher rates of cesarean sections, lower calf survivability, and lower cow fertility. The most reliable and best understood means of controlling calf birth weight is through genetics, not through nutrition. Do not try to strip condition off cows in the final third and certainly not in the final month of pregnancy. Instead, you should use measures such as delayed weaning, grazing poor pastures, housing autumn carvers and quick turnout to keep your autumn carvers from getting over conditioned in the first place. I really hope that was useful. If you like that, please subscribe, hit like, leave me a comment. Do you carve autumn cows? Do you have autumn carvers? Have you had them in the past and moved away? Are you moving towards autumn carving? Why do you do it and what difficulties do you think you face? And what are the advantages? I would love to have answers to any or all of those questions. Like I say, if you like the video, please press subscribe if you haven't already, hit like, and leave me a comment. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Welcome back. This one, this technical video. That's it for this one. I would love to have your feedback, your comments. Do you guys have autumn carvers? Have you had them and moved away? What do you think the advantages, the disadvantages are?
again, if there are any other questions, of course, by all means, go to your vet. They will be able to best answer specific questions on medicines and trace elements, supplements, nutrition. But anything general, any comments about the video, the, ten, the, the production, please let me know. It's all really good feedback. As I said at the start, if you haven't already, I hope I've made you want to click subscribe, hit like, and leave me a comment. That's it for now. See you next time.